All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco. And joining me today, I have Otis McGregor. Otis is the founder of Tribe and Purpose, and his purpose is to create a legacy of leaders. He is a husband, a father, retired Green Beret, and mentor to other veterans. Uh, Otis, welcome to the Remarkable Coach. Hey, thanks for having me, Michael. This is uh, this is great. Long time coming, too, isn't it? Yeah, thank you, brother. I appreciate you making time to to chat with me. I know, I think you. I know you were on Boxer's other podcast, Conversations yes. with Coaches, and I think that you and I did an episode like three or four years ago. It feels like it was a minute ago. Yeah, yeah, um, it's been a while. <laughs> and since then, I know Kevin has taken over that the the hosting of that podcast. So yeah, it has been a, it's it's been a long time coming for you to be on this one. So I appreciate mm-hmm. you making time. Well, Otis, I like to typically open up this podcast by just inviting my guest to tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words and why it is you do what you do. Yeah. So, uh, like you mentioned in the bio, you know, retired Green Beret. Uh, one of the things I did when I was a young cadet at Texas A&M is I set a career goal for myself in the Army. I was very clear on what I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to retire in 20 years as a lieutenant colonel. Mm-hmm. Well, at 25 years is when I, I retired. So I, I exceeded that. Uh, and I retired as a lieutenant colonel. <clears throat> but one of the things, the, the biggest mistake, I, I like to look at it this way, as a mistake I made in my life, is I had no plan after the Army. Mm-hmm. My only thought post-Army was get a job. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you go through life of, I just need a paycheck, Mm-hmm. You're never going to be happy. Mm-hmm. And that was what I did. I worked for five different great companies and great jobs in seven years and consulted doing the same thing I was doing in between those companies in those seven years. And I was miserable. I didn't know what was going on with me. I, I, I was frustrated. Every one of those companies too. I'd get this offer letter from them. I'd like, Oh, great. They like me. I like them. Let's go work. This is what I'm going to do for the next 20 years, just like I did in the army. Every one of them, 90 days in, be like, man, I don't know if it's you or if it's me, but it ain't right. Something's not right. Yeah. Yeah. The longest I stayed with the company was, uh, was 18 months. It was the Mm -hmm. last, last company I worked for a small business owned by a friend of mine. He actually created the position for me. I was a chief strategy officer. Perfect position for me. Mm -hmm. I had carte blanche. I was remote from Colorado. They were headquartered in my hometown of Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better setup, but I was just as miserable in that company as I was in every other company I'd worked for. And this summer afternoon, it's been, uh, it'll be eight years ago now, eight years ago, sitting here in my home office, feeling sorry for myself, Mm -hmm. wondering what's wrong with me. Why, why do all my friends, all my veteran friends, all my, uh, civilian friends, they all have these great jobs. They love it. They're enjoying life. And here I am once again, frustrated and tired. And that afternoon, as I was sitting here feeling sorry for myself, reflecting on my life since leaving the army, I realized that, uh, only two things have been consistent in my life. Number one, my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always tell people I'm still lucky enough, fortunate enough to be be- married, still married to my beautiful Texas bride. And number two was boys high school rugby. Ironically, Hmm. I had never played. My youngest son became passionate about the game. And my wife and I did what I refer to as the mid-America thing. She'd pick him up from school, drop Hmm. him off at the practice field. Mm -hmm. I'd swing by the practice field on the way home from work, pick him up and drive home. Hmm. I started leaving work a little bit earlier, started getting out of the truck, started talking to a few of the players, you were the other dads that were there, the coach. The coach and I became great friends. Next thing I know, I'm an assistant coach for a sport I'd never played, had no idea about. <laughs> and then I turn around again, and now I'm the head coach. <clears throat> high performance, high level, nationally ranked boys high school rugby club. And it turned out to be a second full-time job. So that afternoon, as I sat here wondering, well, what was going on in my head that was fueling me. I mean, every day I, I'm work. I, I would literally tell people that the only reason I'm working at company X, Y, Z 
is to get a paycheck so that I could coach rugby in the afternoon. I literally told people that to include my bosses at the company, by the way. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I I walked a fine line. Uh, But that afternoon, as I was sitting here thinking, I was like, well, what is it? And I said, well, there's three main pieces to rugby, to this boys high school rugby club. Number one, the game of rugby. Love it. Passionate about it now. Uh, I'm very thankful I got introduced to it when I did. Number two, the boys. Because it was a club, our house was the clubhouse. Yeah. My wife and I, we had 35 extra sons in and out of our house all day long, every day, it felt like. Uh huh. You know, a house full of teenage boys is, uh, yeah, your pantry's empty and you got a lot, a lot of candles. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I grew up playing, I grew up playing, uh, playing hockey in high school. Oh. Yes. And uh, I spent, I spent a good portion of my adolescence at the coach's house. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. So those those two things were really powerful. But what I realized was the third thing, and that third piece was being their coach, mm-hmm. teaching, mentoring, guiding them, challenging them, holding them accountable. <clears throat> when I realized that was what was really fueling me for all those years of coaching, I took that and I started talking with a couple of friends in my inner circle about that, and I got introduced to this thing called executive coaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I'd never heard of. I'd heard of life coaching, you know, Tony Robbins stuff. Sure. And uh, I got introduced to executive coaching and that's why I said, wow, that is for me. And I pivoted uh, my consulting business. I used to do uh, business development consulting in the government contracting space. I pivoted that to executive coaching and that's what I've been doing ever since. That's, you know, that's what fills my tank every morning, fires me up to get up in the morning and, and work out because I know if I work out, I'm, I'm in a better frame of mind for my <laughs> clients when I get on the call with them, as opposed to like this morning, had some, had some uh, interruptions in the middle of the night with dogs getting out and things like that. So the, the sleep quality was pretty low, but you know what, when I rolled over and I saw it was time to get up four 30, uh, I still got up because yeah. I knew if I do my workout, I'm going to perform better today because I want to create that legacy of leaders. I love that, man. I love that, man. And I'm, and I'm, I'm right there with you on that. Uh, that, that discipline is so important to set the tone for the rest of the day. Yesterday mm-hmm. was my fourth wedding anniversary and we went, out, we went out, we had, we had dinner and I had a couple drinks and I got to bed a little later than I usually do. And sure enough, 4 a.m. this morning, mm-hmm. my alarm's going off and I'm thinking, oh no. And, but you got to do it and you got, and I did it and you got to do it. You got to do it every time. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. There's, there's so much, I think people, people miss this point. And it's one of the things I teach with my clients is about routine, our personal Mm -hmm. routines and how important they are. Everybody talks about creating systems and processes in your business. And the reason we create systems and processes in business is because they're repeatable. And if things are repeatable, we can optimize them. Yep. That's what your personal routine is. It is your personal system that you can monitor and see. You know, this is my normal bedtime. I went to bed after, and I might have had a couple of whiskeys more than I usually do, and uh-huh. I feel it in the morning. So, right, there's there's a data point, and I can adjust and, and yep. you know, make note of it, prepare for it, and suck uh-huh. it up when I do it, right? Yeah, embrace the suck. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I think um... – uh, Jocko Willink, uh, another military guy, his, his big thing is discipline equals freedom. And if you're able to, to have that discipline, it allows you, um, it, it'll, it gives you slack in other areas of your life because you've got that under control. Exactly. Jocko was a Navy SEAL yep. and I was a Green Beret. We were, we were, uh, think of us like, uh, two brothers. Yep. We will fight each other to the, to the <laughs> death. But I tell you what, if you put if you put one thing in between us, you're going down hard. So yes, uh, where do the where I, do the I, Rangers I, fit in there? Yeah, and the Rangers also. I mean, we're all brothers in arms, and uh, you put us all three in the room, we're going to be we'll be talking some BS about you know it's like you you this you that all you do is this and making fun of each other. But somebody else walks in and tries to say something. Oh, not a smart. I've I've, I've seen somebody do that. <laughs> I mean, there was no fisticuffs. It did not become physically violent. But let me tell you, if looks could kill, that dude, that dude instantly <laughs> combusted when he said that and realized how wrong he was in saying something like that to our group. 
That's <laughs> hilarious. I love it. Yeah. Um, so Otis, who, who are your clients today? Who, who's your, who's your ideal client? Who do you work with on a daily basis? Man, I love working with small business leaders. Mm-hmm. There, there's a couple of aspects of that because, you know, it's, it's still fresh. It's, uh, they, even, even some of the mom and pop shop, small business leaders that have been doing it for, you know, several years, but there's, there's that, that ability to, to shift and focus and that's still that that tight dedication it's not we're not as tied to how do i make the shareholders happy and that's what happens in a corporate level they lose a lot of that that fire it becomes how do it's not as at the corporate level when you're trying to make the shareholders happy you tend the the client and the the team tend to drop down in priority Mm -hmm. but in a small business a small business is still so tight knit and it's about the team. I don't say it's about, it's, it's a family atmosphere. I'm, I'm much more in the tribe atmosphere mm-hmm. uh, because I can kick you out of a tribe. I can't kick you out of my hand, my family, you know, <laughs> we're, we're blood related, whether we want to be or not sort of thing. So that's, that's number one. And then number two to add to that is small businesses that are growing and want to grow. They, they have achieved some success and instead of, instead of hitting a plateau, there's a, there's a thing called the sigmoid uh, curve where you, you achieve success and it flattens out and then you tend to drop off. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to come in and prevent that drop off at the end of that, that flat space after you've achieved success, mm-hmm. helping that business build a team of leaders mm-hmm. because the best follower that you can ever have is the great leader. So mm-hmm. if you think about it, if you have a team of leaders, people who are willing to take charge of themselves and their team and their responsibilities working for you in your team as part of that organization, you will. That that sigmoid curve, there's not going to be a drop off. It'd be a little blip and we're going to go back up again. Nice. So let's let's talk about that. What does that what does that look like when you come into uh, a company, a small business? Um what is what does that look like when you get in there? What does a typical engagement with you look like? How long are you working with them? What sort of things are you working with them on? So we have a we have a program we call the Green Beret Leadership Program. It's a three month program. It's it is designed around either individuals. Individuals are welcome, but it's really a great fit for that business to to put their their potential leaders or or their entire team in this. And what they get is they get an understand, start off with who you are, because mm-hmm. uh, you got to know where you're at on the map, give them that skill, start to develop that skill set of mindfulness and self-awareness. And then we talk about uh, leadership. Mm-hmm. It's important leadership traits, those five most important that I think they are. And then how do you build a team? Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you build a team that has an attitude of continuous improvement and how does, what's that process? So I've got a five-step process I'll walk you through and how to create that team. Then it's how do we solve the problem? And what I've done is I've taken, I've taken the process that I use as a Green Beret to mission analysis, how do we got to go get this bad guy, we've got to go build this military to stop a, a dictator, whatever those missions were when I was a Green Beret. Mm-hmm. I've taken that process and I've converted it into business. Mm-hmm. And so I show you, I teach that process of how to, how to identify, isolate, and solve the problem, how to mm-hmm. put together a plan, the same planning thought process that I learned as a very young cadet, as a ranger, learn how to do that. And then how do you execute? How do you follow through as a leader? And then we wrap up the program with how do I as a leader, continue to push myself for continuous improvement and challenging. Because I tell you what, I know you've been there, Michael, when you've got a team of high performers, they are pushing you. So when we're doing these first three steps, the first three or four steps and teaching your team, you as a leader, better figure out how you're going to stay in front of them. This isn't this yeah. isn't the old adage of I just need to be one chapter ahead in the book sort of thing. You better <laughs> be a book two ahead because those people – when you, when you start to put together a team like this of high performers, a if chapter, you, you got to show up. You got to show up. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the that's the program, and that's a that's the video portion of the program. And then okay. the other piece that we do is a one hour weekly 
group coaching, live group coaching. Okay. So for those three months. So that, and that's where it's, Hey, I was, I, I watched this part and I'm, I'm struggling with that or, or, Hey, we're looking at it this way. How can I, you know, it's where you get to ask that question and get that feedback mm-hmm. from me as an expert who's, who's lived it and done it for many years, both in business and in the military. Mm-hmm. Nice. So this, it sounds like this is like a, uh, maybe kind of like a, a, a hybrid course and coaching type program. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I still do one-on-one coaching. I, I still love that. There's, there's a handful of uh, very particular clients that I, that I will continue to work with. And, and every once in a while, somebody else will come in, but the best fit is this Green Beret leadership program uh, because it, it is the, the, the tools that you learn in it are truly agnostic. So it's not an industry specific, mm-hmm. whether you're, you're building a widget, you're, you're running a, a dental office, you're selling real estate or whatever it is, the tools, the processes that you learn, the principles that you learn are mm-hmm. agnostic to any business. I love it. And so for the, for the, the, you, so you got a five-step process on building a team. Are you working with these, these business owners, these leaders on, uh, is this, are you, are you focusing primarily on hiring or is this like a leadership training program? What is that? What does that part look like? It's, it's a training program. So yeah. I, I, I talk to them about how to hire. I don't dive into that too much. That's kind of a sidebar. It's not part of the program specifically, Sure. but it, it's what it, what it boils down to is you've got to know what, as, as the business, as the leader of the business or the organization, You've got to have a vision and you've got to have your values and those have to be established and they have to be upheld all the time. And Mm -hmm. when those are established and upheld, then you attract the right people and you repel the ones that don't fit. Mm -hmm. Just like go back to go back to me. What I found out was going on with me with each of those companies. Mm -hmm. And and again, I, I no no harm to any of those companies, no bad will or anything because they're all great companies, but they were not a fit for me. Sure. My values did not align with their values. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I didn't matter. It didn't matter what they were paying me. It didn't mm-hmm. matter how flexible my schedule was. Our values didn't align because our values didn't align. I was never satisfied in it. Mm-hmm. And that's what you have to do as a leader. You have to have those things established and understood because you repel the ones that don't fit, or if they do still get, you know, get inside the wire, if you will, yeah. then you, Ask them to leave. You give them an opportunity to move on to to something else. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's great. I think that that stuff's super important. I had a conversation on this podcast actually um, a couple a few a few weeks ago with with a another coach who focused a lot on values. And one of his big things about values is that for a company to truly have values, you need to be able to hire by those values and fire by those values and take yeah. financial hits to uphold your values if 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 that's you know if that's what's on um if that's what's at stake Mm -hmm. your values your values become your you know create your standard and as a leader your job is to establish establish and uphold the standards Mm -hmm. you must you must lead by example as a leader now my my favorite kind of tongue-in-cheek one is hey if we're doing red shirt tuesday and everybody's going to wear a red ter- red shirt on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And if I show up in a leader as the leader and wearing a black shirt, you better be wearing you better be wearing a red suit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> because as soon as you're not following the standards, what you're telling everybody else on the team is those they're not important. Right. Same thing with like meetings. Oh, pet peeve of mine. Oh, because time is so valuable, right? If somebody says, "Hey, we're having a meeting at eight o'clock," and they don't show up to eight o five, eight ten. Yeah. 850. What's that telling me? The, That's the telling me the, my time isn't as important as their time. hundred percent. That what you want to show as a leader that, that your team's time isn't important. You, you suspect them to sit around and wait for you. Mm-hmm. I ain't sticking around. And, and you know what? Your top performers won't stick around either. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one thing that I definitely, um, well, one of a number of things, but, uh, for meetings, you know, if, if I'm not, in the zoom room by seven fifty five for an 8am meeting. That's the, then I'm doing something wrong. 
Exactly. I yeah. tell you, I, one big adjustment I had to make uh, after after retiring from the army, you know, because the, the military, you know, every level of the chain, you know, if, if the division commander says, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna go on a run at six thirty, mm-hmm. well, then the brigade commander wants you there at six fifteen, and the battalion, and it trickles all the way down to you know, that, that yeah that that brand new young soldier is there an hour and a half early. <laughs> and so that's that's the way I've lived my entire life. And one of the things I learned in all my you know business meetings, hey, it's like, hey, Michael, let's let's grab a coffee. And I would be there 15 minutes early. Uh-huh. And, and what I learned was most people either show up right on time or maybe five minutes late because you know they're pushing the traffic or whether they didn't add in a buffer. Sure. Yeah, I would be all I'd be just gritting my teeth. If it was, if you and I were had had a meeting at eight thirty, and it was eight twenty nine, and you weren't there, I'd be like, rrr, 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 "That's good guy." <laughs> well, I had to learn. I had to learn to adjust to the culture. Yeah. That principle, but it's still, you know, expect you to be there right on time. Civilians do it a little differently. <laughs> well, it's the whole thing of you know. I mean, it's, it's the true true aspect of time is money, right? Mm-hmm, I mean, sure. if. If I can, you know, call that client and make some arrangement while I'm driving to meet you for coffee. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, 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 I know some guys that are so good at this. I mean, they are walking in the coffee shop saying, all right. Yeah. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Catch you on Thursday, man. Appreciate it. Click. Hey, Otis, how you doing? <laughs> They're good. They good. That's talk about, talk about using your time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Cool. Well, well, Otis. So, so mo- mo- let's mo- let's move along here. What? Uh, yeah. Where do you get your clients these days? How do you market yourself? How do you market your services? What are you doing to to promote Tribe and Purpose? Yeah, we're on uh, we're on social media. Uh, you know, the big one that we focus on is LinkedIn. Yeah. And I, I'll just share. Uh, you know, we we do a lot of uh, short videos myself and uh, Camden, uh, my my uh, vice president of operations, uh, aka podcast co-host aka youngest son uh and so we do a lot of uh short thought-provoking videos and one of my favorite i'll just put my plug out here for it is my whiskey words uh because i'll i'll grab a i'll grab a couple of fingers of whiskey and a cigar and i'll go out back and uh i'll just share some thoughts Love on it. everything from some leadership aspects to, to life life thoughts and and I just have a great time. If you pay really close attention, you might notice a little bit as, as the glass gets a little bit uh-huh. a little bit lower, you might notice a little bit more emotion coming out as I'm talking too. <laughs> <laughs> I always challenge people to look for that and, and see if they could figure out because I'll, I'll record them. I mean, just as a uh, most most people do this that record content, I'll record them in a bunch, right? So. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm, I'm on that maybe third or fourth one and the whiskey glass is getting down to the, you know, the last sip or so uh-huh. I'm going to, I'm going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. And you're, you're in Colorado, right? I am. I am uh Colorado Springs area. You know, the, the front range, I've got Pikes Peak out my back window and, uh, you know, hunting, skiing, fishing, gold water, gold medal water, just uh, an hour away. Yeah. This is, uh, couldn't ask for a better, uh, better place for uncle Sam to, to tease us with when we were younger and then just deciding, cause my wife and I are both Texas kids yeah. and we love Texas. We still call Texas home, but we've decided we live here in Colorado with the mountains and yeah. just love it. Yeah. I was going to say, it sounds a little different than Fort Worth. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there, there's a little bit more terrain here. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um, cool. So, uh, let's see here. What, uh, what sorts of things I would have, what sort of things did you struggle with when you started out coaching? I had this, uh, that's such a fun question. I, cause I, lo- I love, you know, we're all a little bit self-deprecating. We have to be careful with that. There's a whole nother talk, talk about that, mm-hmm. but it, it's fun to call out the things I screwed up because I want other people to learn from this. Sure. And I had this, this, this image in my mind of uh, the field of dreams. Okay. That I start a business. I write a book. I post something on social media. Here they come. And 
Here they all come. Whoa, whoa, there's all. Hey, folks, you're going to have to take a number, right? That, that was that was literally the image I had in my head. And I'm here to tell you, folks, it, it, it don't work that way. That sign out in the front yard does not mean your business is going to be successful. Uh, that was a huge lesson uh, in in that whole aspect because I don't care how good you are. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's that aspect of, if you can, if you have the cure for cancer in your garage and you don't, you can't get it to the right people, you know, maybe your neighbors and your aunt, uncle, cousins, and you know, things like that. They're like, Oh man, that's great. Thanks. But you don't get it to, you know, the doctor, the surgeon general, the, then it does no good. Yeah. And, and that's, that's one of the biggest lessons I learned. I mean, what I do, what, what I know and this is another principle of mine. If I'm not sharing what I know, mm -hmm. I'm a selfish SOB, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I want to share my knowledge and my experience and help others be successful. Well, if I'm sitting on my front porch waiting for people just to drive up, you know, waiting, you know, the, the, you know, the high school, you, you looked at that girl, you smiled at her and you expect she's going to call you and ask you out Friday night. So you sit there by your phone all night. Guess what? That ain't happening. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that was, that was, for me, that was the biggest lesson learned uh, for really for any kind of business, but yeah. particularly for what I do with driving purpose. Mm -hmm. What was your walk us through your thought process there? Walk us through the, the, the like, uh, obviously, the initial frustration, I mm -hmm. think a lot of a lot of our listeners and viewers are going to understand straight away, right? Um, what, what did the, how did the solution come to you? What did you end up doing to, to flip that on its, on its edge? Well, uh, a couple of things. So first off it was, well, let me just grab a quick solution, mm -hmm. right? Read a book, take a class, yep. hire, a, hire a, a company that does X, Y, Z, you know, those are kind of, those are closer to the lottery ticket. So if you think about put to use that metaphor, right? So you know, you start the business and you're going to win the lottery. Well, mm -hmm. never bought a lottery ticket. So how are you going to win the lottery? Right. That's, that's where I was first off. Yeah. So then next step, I was like, well, then I'll buy a lottery ticket because, you know, that's how I'm going to retire and be successful with my life. I'm going to have a lottery ticket. So that was literally what I did. It's like somebody would send me a, you know, the, all those uh, messages that we all get on LinkedIn and things like that. I get one of those messages. You know, oh, that sounds pretty good. Let me hire that guy because that's going to be the solution. He's going to get me 10 new clients a month, blah, 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 all these sort of promises. That didn't work mm -hmm. because. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I didn't have was I didn't have it fixed for me on what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. When we okay. started off the show, you asked me, who's my client? Mm -hmm. Well, I was like, I can help everybody. Right. I can solve it for everybody because leadership is agnostic. Everybody needs to be a leader. Everybody needs to live their life better. So after going through that next step of, let me just hire somebody because they'll solve it for me. I realized that they can't solve it for me. Nobody can solve it for you. You can talk to experts. Mm -hmm. You can hire coaches, which I highly recommend. I mean, I have, a, I have my own coach. Hire coaches that are going to teach, mentor, and guide you, but they're not going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. The solution is you. You have to come up with a solution, the process, because everybody's business is different yeah. whether you're whether you're making widgets uh coaching leadership whatever your business is different because you are different and your values are different so you have to figure out well what does that mean for me who who's the right fit for me who do i know who needs what i do and then the key element that we always have a hard time come overcoming this. This third one is, can they pay? Sure. Yeah. Because there's, I, I do a lot of work with veterans and I've, I've learned this lesson and I'll, and I'll probably do it three or four more times before, before I, I die or, or 10 me. times. Yeah. <laughs> they, the veteran community, God bless us all is looking for a handout. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey man, Otis, what you're doing is awesome. That is really powerful stuff, man. I could really use that. Oh yeah. Great. Okay. Hey, this is where it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. Oh mm, yeah. No, 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 no. Can't do it. <laughs> yeah. So 
because and and truthfully there, there's two problems with the veteran community and i'll speak to this as a as an expert <laughs> and we think we think we can do it all because that's what we were taught go figure right. it out soldier go figure it out ranger yep and two for a bunch of cheap sobs which is ironic I, I find this ironic every time i talk about it because you know, in the military, we lived on a blank check, especially in special ops world. I never had to worry about budget. We we talk about budget. We play the budget game. You know, the fiscal year ends in September and all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I never lacked for anything. If I needed more guns, bullets, optics, rucksacks, uniforms, guess what? I fill out a form, I send it in, and I got them. I never, <laughs> there was no such thing as a budget. So, you know, that, and, and truthfully, that's one of the hard parts that, uh, us military guys have adjusted to the business world that everything costs money now. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to pay attention to that bottom line at this point. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. My wife reminds me of that all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think that's, that's the other aspect of it. And, that, and that's the irony of it is, 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 uh, you know, as a, especially as a green beret in the special ops world, mm -hmm. you know, we had blank checks for everything. I mm -hmm. never, you know, if I needed, if we were going to do some training in Austria or Norway or whatever, and we needed some more cold weather gear, guess what? I wrote a form, filled a form out, sent it in the commander. The commander would go, yeah, no. like, it, like it was coming out of his paycheck, right? Yeah, we don't need it, blah, 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 blah. And I go, well, sir, we need blah, 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 blah. And this is the reason why. You go, all right, just one time we'll do it. You know, stamp approved. <laughs> You're like, we're, we're training at elevation. We need to stay warm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't, you can't just, not give us warm weather gear or cold weather yeah. gear <laughs> but it's just funny though because because that whole aspect and then when the guys when we get out of the military we're, we're just the cheapest sobs out there it's like uh you know i don't know i don't know what it is about how living on a blank check for for you know 25 years and then all of a sudden it's coming out of my paycheck and i'm like oh i can't spend any money on that mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think that that makes sense. It, and it's like, it's almost like coming from that place of scarcity where, you know, mm. now, you know, it's not a blank check. So there's the, it's, it's scarce now. So you want to be more careful with it. That's um, probably a good way of putting it, you know, right. cause you know, we never really thought about it in, in that sense of abundance and, and scarcity and, you know, in the, in the teams. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, when you step away, and you know, you literally take all your gear that you've had, all your cool guy gear, and you hand it in, and you yeah. feel naked all of a sudden. You know, it's, it's a real dichotomy because you feel relieved uh -huh. that I'm done, right? Uh -huh. I've gotten rid of all that stuff. Uh -huh. But then you feel naked because it's like, dang, I don't have my, I don't have my, uh, you know, my seven six two plated armor vest anymore. Uh -huh. What if I, you know, <laughs> in this weird sort of way, our minds can can run so yeah it may, it may very well be this this shift from we've got it all everything we need is always available to now it's all gone mm -hmm. and that, that feeling of scarcity that's a that's a really good observation yeah interesting well cool man um you know i want to be uh, respectful of your time we've covered a lot here otis is there anything else that that you um would like to chat about that we haven't touched upon yet I think the, the the thing I just love talking about is is how leadership, the principles, mm -hmm. the foundations are hold true to no matter who you are and what you are, whether you're in charge of somebody or not. And that understanding of you have to lead yourself before you can lead others. Mm -hmm. And the best followers make the best leaders. Mm -hmm. When you start to think about that and provide the opportunity for people in your team to succeed and excel, that's, that's exciting. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, a real quick snippet of this as a leader, you have to have optimism and you have to have a vision mm -hmm. and then you have to be able to sell that vision to your team. Mm -hmm. Because when I have a vision for what I want my company, my team to do, my five-year vision, if you will, mm -hmm. to get my team to perform, I, they have to see themselves, their personal vision. 
They have to have their own personal vision and they have to see themselves in your vision. And when that happens, they're going to perform because that's who, who, what, when, where, and what they want. I said what twice, who, what, when, <laughs> and where they want to be in no. five years. They see themselves. Oh, so if we do this, this, and this, and I perform this, I can be that manager. I can be a director. I can be the vice president of operations in five years because we're going to have this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. I see myself. I see what I want to be in your vision there, boss. And because I see that, I'm mm -hmm. going to fight for it. I'm going to work for it. That's what we want. That's how you keep the top talent. That's how you keep them engaged. This go through the motion yeah. stuff, this, this, hey, we're going to, we're going to make another widget today. We've got to make 500 widgets. We've got to package this. We've got to do that. That's just people collecting a paycheck. And when people just collect a paycheck, somebody offers them a couple of dollars more an hour. Guess what? They're gone. Mm -hmm. And guess what you just lost? You just lost all that, all that training and all that effort you put into that person because you didn't care for them. Mm -hmm. You didn't care enough about understanding who and what they want to be. What is their vision? And that's what we have to do as leaders. We got to understand our team. What do you want to do? How does, how do you see yourself in tribe and purpose in five years? Mm -hmm. Ask, start asking that question as a leader of your team. And you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how, how many of them, Really, first off, don't don't have a clue. Challenge mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Don't go home. It's homework. Come back to you. But once they understand it, once they have a vision for it, they're in. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like hey, you know that that's like uh, uh, preseason football and mm -hmm. and the we all you know everybody everybody in the NFL says they're going to win a Super Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. When when spring training preseason starts, everybody believes that. They say it, but they don't believe it. Mm -hmm. The ones that win it don't just have the talent, but they have that true team focus mm -hmm. and belief in that vision. They see themselves on that podium with the Lombardi trophy. Mm -hmm. That's the difference in it. That's where you, that's where you really build that team and can create success for everybody. Not just, not just the business and the bottom line, everybody that's part of that organization i love that that's such a great point otis i think yeah i mean excitement and motivation is such a personal subjective thing mm. that it's it's part of right it's so you, you what you're saying right it's part of a leader's job to kind of incite that and that takes a lot of empathy that takes a lot of understanding uh and that takes a lot of visioning and it's it, it's not necessarily this kind of rah rah crap that you would immediately think about but it's it's more it's more personal than that yeah yeah there's it reminds me so uh air assault school it's an army school for repelling out of helicopters right fort campbell kentucky we used to joke because every time your left foot struck the ground you had to say air assault so <laughs> we began to say false motivation is the key to graduation because <laughs> and and you know in that school in that aspect yeah okay kind of tongue in cheek but i can tell you this in in the rest of the world outside of the u.s army's air assault school false motivation is not the key to graduation uh-huh right yeah you can't fake it till you make it yeah yeah it, it just doesn't last no. right that that, that, that kind of motivation doesn't last long enough it's not going to last five years. <laughs> no, no. And you're not authentic. When you're not your authentic self, when you are faking who you are, when, when let's, let's say, because some people try to play this game, that we've got office Otis and we've got home Otis and we've got rugby Otis and that you're, you're lying on all three accounts. Because if you're not being your authentic self, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to be fulfilled. You're never going to be satisfied. And it's going to be a weight, a weight that you carry around mm -hmm. all the time. And people will see it because, and I'm not talking about highly trained people. I'm talking about instinctual 
mm -hmm. will see it. They will see that you're a fake. Mm -hmm. they, won't, they may not be able to say, he's a fake. They may not see it blatantly, but they'll feel it. And they'll know something ain't right. They'll know it in their heart. And when they know that, then they're not following you. Mm -hmm. They're going through the motions, quiet quitting. That's the, that's the, the phrase yeah. that you're right now, right? That's what yeah. they're going to do. Yeah. They're going to be just taking a paycheck from you and sucking oxygen. Yeah. I don't want that. I don't want that for anybody on my team. I don't want that for any of my clients either. Yeah. Beauty. Uh, Otis, what three books uh, do you recommend all of your clients read? Uh, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, number one. Oh, yep. Hang on. hang on. I got, I got, you got, a, you got an autographed copy. <laughs> I, I kind of do. I got a very fancy copy. Ooh. Yeah, that is a nice one. I yeah. got the, I got the, the very thin paperback that cost me 99 cents that you can slide in your pocket. That's I've got, cool. I've got a few copies of those too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's my favorite. So I read this at least once a year. It's, it's. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that is so uh, foundational, you know, because I, I, I've become a huge stoic uh, fan, stoic myself. Uh, and that's, you know, my, my weekly newsletter, Mo Monday moments, it always starts off with a stoic quote to, get that week going and get the thoughts going on that. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, good to great. Uh, mm -hmm. Jim Collins book is just, man, it's, there's so much in that book there is. and understanding the business world. And then, you know, when it comes down to number three, it kind of, kind of depends on the person. Uh, one of the ones I recommend for all my veterans that are going into uh, business is the first 90 days. I can't remember the authors, but it's actually a book written for uh, individuals who are taking over as an executive in, a, in an existing organization. Okay. And the reason I like this one is, yeah, it, it's, it's 90, it's about the first 90 days in the job, mm -hmm. but there's so much business knowledge in this book that is just, it, it's so compact and has so much information in it that, that, if you're, if you're looking for, if you're like, I'm not quite sure I understand all those aspects about business, read that book mm -hmm. because it, it covers everything from, you know, personnel to P and L to management to how do you set this ordering structures. And I, it's just, yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a really good one uh, as a foundational. And then, uh, you know, man, there's, there's so many more, uh, you can do more. Oh, here's, than another philosophy, here's another philosophy one that I, I love. Uh, it's, it's by Admiral Stockdale, uh, Admiral James Stockdale. And it's called uh, Thoughts of a Philosophical Fighter Pilot. So if you recall, Admiral Stockdale uh, was shot down over Vietnam and was uh, a prisoner of war for, what, 10 years or something? It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. He was tortured all the time. And what he talks about, it was... Timing, God aligns the timing. You never, you can never plan for it, but there is a plan for it. Mm -hmm. He had just finished his master's degree in philosophy at uh, Stanford, if I remember correctly. Right before, I mean, within months of him deploying, taking command of a squad, a Navy fighter squadron in Vietnam on an aircraft carrier before he got shot down. And he had that, the Stoics, his understanding of stoicism fresh in his mind mm -hmm. when he was under a parachute, when he got shot down before he got captured. So that book is phenomenal. Uh, and that, that's actually what got me into uh, stoicism and understanding philosophy more. Okay. I was reading that book years ago. Cool. That's been on my list for a minute. I have not yet read that one, but I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. Have you read about face by Hackworth? Oh, Yes. Yeah, yes. that's getting on the shelf somewhere. Oh, there it is right there over my shoulder. Yeah, oh, yeah there it is. Yeah. The, yeah. the gigantic one. <laughs> mm -hmm. That one that is was, loaded with leadership stuff. It was, yeah, that I had, uh, it was an inter, from my perspective where I was when I, I read it. I think I read that, if I remember right, like right after I retired from the army. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of my, the leadership, of course, is, is great because he was a phenomenal leader. The, the thing that I struggled with in the book 
that still sticks in my head was the the lack of true leadership and willing to take responsibility at the upper levels of the military that Hackworth talks about yeah. towards the end of the book. And that one, that really, really hit home for me uh, yeah. in, in, in reading that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Should I turn around and look at some other books? I mean, you can, yeah. I've got, you want to read a Hazardous Duty uh, and right next to Hazardous Duty is uh, Rommel. It's a, okay. it's a biography of, of Rommel. Uh, so yeah, he was a Nazi, but let me tell you, that dude could lead and had, was a visionary. And then another one, uh, my my good friend and uh, former boss and mentor, Admiral James, uh, Admiral James, uh, Admiral, uh, Admiral uh, McRaven. I was messing up his name so bad. Admiral McRaven's book, Spec Ops, his first book, that was that was actually his master's thesis. Oh, wow. He wrote it in post-grad. That is a great book. Nice. Uh, and a, a study of leadership and how to overcome uh, adversity because you put this wonderful plan together and then it all goes to goes out the window as soon as things start happening so yeah as soon as bullets start flying <laughs> yep yep it's a great book great book so very good uh bill, Otis, bill very, mcraven sorry i was like why why can't i think of his first name what's, what's bill. first name's phil bill b-i-l-l -L. Bill. Yeah. awesome so we'll uh we'll put links to these books we'll list list out these books of course on the show awesome. notes and everything and otis <clears throat> where can our listeners and viewers connect with you online Best place is LinkedIn. Uh, you know, it's just uh, Otis McGregor. Uh, if you find Dr. Otis McGregor, that's dad. He's not very active. Dad's retired. He's not very active on uh, LinkedIn anymore. But uh, so just Otis McGregor. Uh, you find me there. Follow me. You know, uh, our website is tribe-purpose.com. And I'd, I'd love for folks to uh, jump onto our newsletter, our Monday Moments newsletter. Like I said, uh, guess what day it comes out Monday. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm really original when I come to naming things. Mm -hmm. So it comes out bright and early Monday morning. It's a stoic quote and it's something I learned this week for you to take forward and go with, have that thought in your mind so that you can have more success for the week and, and not, not struggle. Not, not all my lessons are bad. Some of them are good, but Get your Monday morning kicked off with a thought. So Monday Moments newsletter, you can get that at tribe-purpose.com. Awesome. Awesome, Otis. Um, listen, man, I appreciate you making time to, to chat with me. This has been fantastic. Um, always a pleasure. Thank you for your service. Um, and uh, yeah, just thanks for joining me here. Hey, this is great, Michael. I really appreciate it, man. Good to see you. Thank you. You as well. And thank you, of course, as always, to our listeners and viewers. You guys are fantastic. And we'll see you next time.